Shalom, all praises to the Mosai, Yehovah, Yehoshua, this is YYBY. I'm back. I was gone for a minute, had a lot of things going on, a lot of sessions booked, so a little free time and everything, so what's up? So what I want to show y'all is you know, my recording template inside of uh, Reason you know, that I put together. I always update it, you know, if I come up with another crazy idea. And, you know, this is just something to give, uh, you know, the Reason Gang out there, you know, uh, you know, an idea of how they can do theirs. You know, sometimes this makes things more easier, you know, when you're doing your recording process. Because sometimes people say, you know, they don't like certain uh, sh certain shortcuts. I mean, certain features. Well, they say in Reason need more features as far as the workflow. I'm not going to agree on that, but it's all about what you make it because every dog has their flaws. All right, so now, as you can see, I have a beat track. I have 24 tracks, right? I have 24 tracks. Uh, My beat track, I have, you know, F2, I have, I, you, know, the e, you know, the EQ that's already built in it. And what I do, I use that EQ to put a dip in a certain area if I'm recording, you know, beats you know recording artists over over the beats so that means that if they don't have the stems all right so you know i'll put a dip in you know different places based on what type of record it is how it sounds so i play with that right uh on my vocal track when you go to the rack i have an auto tune that's off on bypass I have an auto tune already right here prepared it's not where it's not on the reason why i have this right here is because you know if this is the first track I'm going to record vocals on. So if an artist say, hey, man, uh, you know, you got the auto tune? I'm like, all right, cool. You know, now, let me rewind it back a little bit. When when I go to the sequencer, when I first drop this beat in, let me let me drop a beat in right quick. Let me go to, uh, let me go to one of my beats. Well, let me go to desktop. And drag, you know. So, you know, I dropped, I dropped the beat in and everything, right? And what I do, I cut the edges off right here. And when I cut the edges off, what I do, you know, um, I go to, I turn off the, the disable stretch. And then I go right here and I go to uh, pitch edit comp for the beat. And, you know, I go based on one of these notes I decide to use. Normally it's the blue one. And I click it and it'll tell me the note, G1, you know, or you know which one that make more sense. And then I, what I do, I type G1 right here you know g1 so that's most likely probably g major yes a g major as you can see i close that right click and go back up here and take this beat back to all around <clears throat> then i get the tempo of the beat once i get the tempo of the beat and that's we know that's when um i got the note of the beat so go back to the rack that's what the auto-tune is for. So they say, hey, you know what? I need an auto-tune. Boom, I got the auto-tune. And then I set everything up on the auto-tune, the notes and everything. And then uh, if they went on another track, you know, I right-click this. And I go to uh, copy. And I go to copy effect. You know, not FX sends, but I go to copy. And, uh, you know, copy uh, insert FX. Copy it to the next track. So on and so forth. Like that, the auto-tune. Because this is very light CPU usage. Especially if you got a decent uh, computer, so you straight. Um... Let's keep going. So again, I got 24 tracks. Uh, right here, these are my send effects. I have my send effects inside of a, a combination, combinator, right? I have a send effects inside a combinator. So you press device. I got three reverbs. I got an echo. I got a saturation now for the vocals to pump them up. I got a unison and I got a polar. I might add something else on here, you know. So when you go to the mixer, as you can see, I got the reverb on on all the tracks because a lot of artists like to hear a little reverb. And, you know, sometimes even if they don't want it, if it's there, that give them a certain vibe and energy what they like. Regardless of the fact, I, I'm, I'm telling you, uh, when I got the beat track right here, the beat track, you know, I, I got a choice to make spread that beat track, make it bigger or make it more narrow. Sometimes you you spread it that, that give the beat more space for the vocals to fit in. And then as you can see on this side right here, you know, these are the my uh my send effects right here. So certain send effects I put on the beat as I go. Uh sometimes I, you know, uh 
you know, automate them and they give their energy and vibe, you know, with the music as we going, you know, uh, and people like that. What I do, I always have the beat track a little lower than most of the vocal tracks. The reason why is because, uh, you know, a lot of the beat track, most of the, all beat tracks are they already, the instrumentals already mastered, mix and master. They already loud. They already big. So you don't want them to overpower the tracks. Um, what I do on each one of my tracks, especially on this main vocal track, I have I have the compressor set. I have light compression set on all of them on each track when I'm recording that. Uh, I have the gate set a certain way where, you know, it stop. you know, a lot of the the, you know, the the white noise or sometimes the background noises and stuff. You know, it don't matter if even if you in a strong booth or not, whatever, you know, some it picks up things sometimes picks up people like how they, you know, when they use a lot of, uh, you know, smacking or sometimes when they move in the headphones or, you know, or the bleeding, the bleed in the headphones, you know, it kind of cut a lot of that stuff out. To make your job easy when it's time to mix. Okay? So, I have that on. What I do, I have this all my gain knobs turned up higher. Now, the reason why I got these gain knobs turned up higher is because a lot of people like to record on their audio interface, you know, with the, the mic volume very loud. Me, I like to record the mic volume. I have the mic volume down like where, it's it, you know, it's low. It's like around 20 something DB or a little lower than that, just a bit. So if they do get loud, if they get loud, they would not peak. I don't want no peak because the peak, you know, make it make the vocal sound distorted because sometimes vocals is not contained. Even though if you got that compressing there, it helps. But still, you know, you, you, you don't want to take the life from the artist. So you want them to give all the energy they can give because I, I got an audio interface called the Vote 276. Uh, and they also have a 76 compressor already built in the drum, you know, so that already given the vocals boost. So the vocals come going through a compressor through the audio interface, going through light compression again, you know. And it made the vocals sound hard, like they really standing out already just so when I'm recording the artist, they already feeling the vibe and the energy of the music. You see what I'm saying? And, you know, and then as we can go, you know, here and there, sometimes I press F2 and just add a little EQ to tweak them up. And so I give them a pre-mix. You feel what I'm saying? I give them a pre-mix, something that they can take home and listen to. And then on my master compressor, I have this turned on, you know, at a, you know, a light setting and all that to, to kind of give it that, that glue sound as I'm going. So this is everything. This is the process as I'm recording, you know, uh, you know, in reason. And. Let me see what else. I'm missing anything. Oh, if I'm missing anything, let me see. Oh yeah. So now, in my, in, I have a, I have my a combinator at the top, and this is called my basic mastering combinator suite song, right? And what I have in here, I have a, uh, you know, the core uh, correlation. Where I can make the you know the track more wide and and it, you know give me you know you know the idea of you know if the you know if it's what you know based on the width and the narrow of the music and everything the invert phase and all that type of stuff right so this is a great tool to have right uh, then I have a a stereo converter where I can press this and, and play the music in mono stereo mono stereo when I'm mastering right after I finish doing the mixing then I have my my basic mastering uh, plugins. The equalizer, stereo imager, compressor, maximizer. Now, peep this. So, let's say I want to use a preset. Just a quick preset that I already created or a preset that, you know, that one of the stock presets that Studio One, you know, I mean, Reason come with. And uh, just to see how it sounds. Because, again, it's all about your ears and what you know. So, you still got to tweak stuff. Because some presets would make your stuff sound horrible. So, if I got a preset, the dope thing about it is that if I close this, I can actually turn this one off and I could just drop another. I'm going to give you an example. Like, I can go right here, factory. Say you go to factory. Let's say you go to the combi. Oh, I go to all effects and say I go, no, matter of fact, let's go to combi, you know, and I say, you know, I type in master. You know, and I say, you know what? I want to use the the uh, 
the dual band so I could drop that right here and boom I can use this one inside of my mastering suite and I could just have this one all see that was dope about the combinator when they did it in version 12 a lot of people say they don't want to upgrade to 12 but you should because now uh we always can put things in the combinator but you couldn't put a combinator in a combinator that's the that was the problem now you can so now you can save your mastering presets you know your way inside the combinator so you can have different options that you want to use you could try different ones at the same time cut off one and use the other you know and that's kind of the same way i did with my effects i put it inside a combinator and you know and and, and you know they all connected so it, it helps organize your stuff even more and as you see I got this little you know thing right here that I use it you can change the color and name it and so this what this does helps divide you know to keep my my rack organized where you know this is send effects right as you see uh and then here come another one say audio tracks and then all the audio tracks further down so and then on the top of this I have a tape I have a tape stop so sometimes if they want their concept or the idea of the tape stop you know, I got that. I got it on bypass. If they ever decide to use it, certain parts that they give crazy ideas and stuff like that. And uh, my MIDI keyboard is connected to certain things. Like for example, like one of my buttons is connected to the tape stop, so I can turn it on and off. You know, uh, this this beat track, one of these buttons for the mute button. So if I want to do an automation where I'm playing a certain part in the song and I just want to pause the beat to give it that certain vibe, boom, I could just do that real quick. Uh, I have I have certain turn knobs on my keyboard that's connected to uh, the the limiter the out the out you know output gain the reason why I got it uh, you know a knob connected to the output gain is because when 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 I'm mixing when, not when I'm mixing but when I'm recording right uh, a lot of the times you know. I don't really too much want to mess with these levels right here. I want to kind of keep them, you know, at their place as I'm recording. And I normally would bring this level of this beat up lower, you know, you know, higher or lower based on, you know, the mic check, you know, because some beats are louder than others. So based on that, so the vocals can sit real good when the artist is recording. So, you know, because again, the, the beat will overpower the vocals. Now, the reason why I like to keep these, you know, where they at right now for this moment is because when I'm in the sequencer, when I'm recording the vocals, I make sure that all my wave files, after they record, even if they record a little soft or too loud, I make sure that I even them out. So, for example, like, um, I go grab a sample and if I drop this sample in, if I got this sample in, right, for example, let's say... Let's say these vocals is like this, and let's say I record another track, and let's say this one is like this. You know, sometimes they get a little higher take. So I always make sure that I got everything at, at a certain level where I can just vision it and it look the same. I do all my tracks like that. So about time it's time for me to mix, I'm already in, in a space where most of my all my vocal tracks or at a certain proper volume level with each other, you know? So now when I start going to the mixer and start, you know, leveling everything and, you know, doing the proper thing, panning and all that, a lot of stuff is even out. It sound better, it, you know, it comes out better. And that's just, you know, a trick that you can always do, you know, to make your job easier. So a lot of these things you can do re during your recording process. And you learn these things over the years, man, as you're dealing with music. You know, there's no wrong or right way when it comes once you learn the basics. So, again, uh, did I leave anything out? Let me make sure. I think that's it. So, yeah, if I, if I come up with some new ideas, you know, you know, I'll, I'll do another video on this joint. But right now, yep, this is my process. And also, you know, you know, you can color these joints. Everybody know that, you know tweak it up add your own knobs and all that and i got some some of these knobs connected to the buttons down here such and such so this is my template if you want it hit me up hit me direct email me and i'll send it to you if not you know saying you can create your own idea 
and we can make great music. This is YYBY. Tell me what y'all think.